Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm going to share my 10 best tools for making junk journals and ephemera. So that's what to buy and why. And this is especially for you if you're a beginner. So that's what to buy if you want to make journals like these, if you want to bind in the covers really easily, if you want to trim down the papers in a larger journal or maybe in one that's a bit smaller. What tools to buy if you want to make tags, if you want to make little journaling cards, what tools to buy if you want to make little vintage postcards or envelopes or pockets. We all know that tools for junk journaling can cost a lot of money and it's not always easy to know where to start. So I've developed a way of thinking to evaluate how I spend, to think about which tools I buy to make little goodies like these and how to get the most from my money. So after this video, I would love it if you felt really inspired, but also better equipped to make the very most from all of the dollars or pounds that you spend and maybe have a little bit more craft space and a lot of fun. The 10 tools that I'm talking about today have all earned their place when assessed against two types of criteria. So that's things about cost, what does it cost, but also what value it brings. I ask myself the question, what value does it bring to me? So that's what value does it bring to you? When I think about cost, I think about upfront. So what do I need to shell out? But also, does a tool need some ongoing costs to run it, to use it, to maintain it? What does it cost in terms of space in my craft room? And that's just a, a practical limitation that I need to acknowledge. And sometimes I need to think about, or I've started to think about a bit more, impact on the environment. Value is really interesting. What value does a tool bring to you? And that will vary between all of us. There isn't one answer. I think about things like how many times will I really use it? And also how many different uses does it actually have? Can we get really creative with something and make it fit lots of different projects, use it in lots of different ways? Does it totally stop you from making some of the things you want to make if you don't have it? I think that's a really fundamental question. Alternatively, are we just being swayed by something that's interesting today and perhaps a fad? And thinking about all of these questions, the first tool, simple though it is, that I wanted to share is my needle. And you'll have seen me use this in so many journals that I've made. So I do have piles and piles of journals in my craft room and I've pretty much used the figure of eight method with basic household string on all of them. So this is a one with a bit of a spine, so it's like a just over half a centimetre spine on this and I think I've added two signatures. It's an incredibly quick and easy method and I just use my little needle. So this is something I inherited from my mum's sewing box. So I can't say that I spent money buying it but I'm sure it's available relatively cheaply on Amazon as is everything. It is seven and a half centimetres long I'll just do that for you, three inches long. It has a bit of a curve in it, which I have found to be quite useful when I'm pushing the needle through fairly thick papers. The eye is big and that's really quite fundamental because I like to use string. This is available really cheaply too. So as a combination, this is a great tool for so many critical purposes, back to our questions. If you needed to buy it, it wouldn't cost a lot. You don't need to pay to maintain it. It's almost no space and it brings a huge amount of value to me because I can be easily and quickly making up my journals and binding in my signatures. I get lots and lots of use from it and it's my most fundamental tool. So obviously if I didn't have that, I would be stopped from making some of my journals and what this means is and bear with me this isn't as complicated as it looks having done that little evaluation the cost is low so it's down here cost high cost is here the value is really great so in this little matrix I'm putting it in this box and this box is what I call 
my basic must-haves and you'll see me talk about needles, scoreboards, trimmers, scissors. These are low cost, high value items which I would suggest as a beginner are our little collections that we need to really get going and launch. And I think what it tells me is we can get going and have a lot of fun without spending a lot of money. The second tool is a small paper trimmer and the one that I've made an abundance of use of is a Fiskars paper trimmer which is a, a size is about eight and a half inches so it runs to about 22 centimetres so it's actually quite small and I worked with this one for years so in fact this is about I'm estimating about 12 years old and I think I paid about 12 pounds for it when I bought it it's so long ago that I can't be absolutely sure the reason I like this one is first of all it's really light so it's easy to pick up and move around your desk it's wide enough to trim papers in the kind of junk journal size that I like to create so I typically do quite a bit of folding and cutting and trimming of my papers so I like them to be different sizes but I always need to trim them down a little bit so it's perfect for that so I can do my trimming quite quickly because it's very easy to just pull this up and see where the cut is going to be. So there is a dark line where the cut goes and that means that I can be quite accurate whether it's trimming down papers in a larger journal, trimming down papers in a smaller journal or even if you're trimming down little bits of ephemera that go inside it it means that you can be really quite accurate and that was the really the, the biggest selling point of this that I found once I bought it but if we think about those criteria let's just have another look one of the aspects of every trimmer is that we always need at some point to replace the blade so what's really important as well is that we can not only find blades to replace but also that they're not ridiculously expensive and it's easy to find on Amazon Fiskars blades which fit the trimmer that I've got so I have bought other little trimmers so I've got a teeny tiny one here which I just thought I would trial out that came from Hobbycraft and that cost about four pounds it's a cute little thing that's great for just trimming the edges off bits of tags and things it wouldn't be great for larger pieces of paper of course it's too small I've, I've, I'm just going to confess I have lots of fails so I tried this one so this is a larger trimmer I thought wouldn't it be great if I could trim down larger pieces of paper there we go we can see it um, the issue with this I find it to be more awkward because you pull up there I don't know why but that just isn't as easy you see that the this ran down as I pulled up the end and the lip here is not as deep so when you're putting anything against it it sometimes came over the top it's larger so for smaller piece of paper you don't necessarily want something as large as this to play with on your desk and I found it to be more problematic to find replacement blades it does have a measurement guide here for larger pieces of paper but I didn't fall in love with this when I'd got it and I reverted back to my small one the third tool in my list is this scoreboard so it's my envelope scoreboard and it's a wooden one with it's quite weighty relatively small so it's about 19 centimeters wide by 25 centimeters tall and it has grooves in all of the same places that you'd have them if you bought one of the traditional plastic envelope scoreboards it has quite a deep lip for butting your paper up against which I like and overall I just really like it because first of all it's relatively tactile I like the fact that it's wood it's weighty so it doesn't slide around my desk too easily and when I score in it to make envelopes which I do using a little bone folder I just find that the wood means the edges of that score in the paper 
are treated a little bit more tenderly and I rip the paper a bit less. It just feels really nice to use. So the kind of envelopes that this lets me make are really any size. So I get loads of value from making envelopes of all different sizes. So flippity flap in a, a little compendium folio, having lots of spares around the place because I can just sit and make them because I really enjoy it. I've made them with glossy paper from larger sheets. I like making them from encyclopedia paper. It obviously copes with any sort of paper and even absolutely enormous pages from a book about the British countryside. So for me this is a superbly valuable tool. I think I use them to score my grungy envelopes, my altered envelopes and again I put my altered envelopes in a flip-flap mechanism in this folio. I think I showed this folio last week when I talked about my 10 best books that I like to use. So for me this is phenomenal value. Let's just look at our criteria. Huge value. I probably pretty much use it for just envelopes and so not loads of different uses. But if I didn't have this I'd probably need some form of specialist envelope folding tool and I have seen them here on YouTube. It's definitely not a fad. I use it all the time. I absolutely love it. I found it in a craft store and my mind is a little bit addled. I don't know whether I paid £4 or £10. I know when I bought it it felt like quite a lot particularly because I already had the pink one, the plastic one. But I've not regretted it. It is for me one of my most loved tools but I would say for a beginner this is one where it's perhaps worth spending a little bit more so you might go a bit further to the right on the cost line but I still think it would sit in this top left hand box which is fantastically high value but still a, a modest cost and I think it's a great basic must-have for a beginner if you want to do some junk journaling. The next tool I want to talk about is scissors and I do have quite a few pairs but if I had to pick one that I absolutely love and I get the most value from it's these and in fact this pair of scissors cost me a pound and so did the two of these together. So I bought my first proper pair at university and I think these were £12 back in the day a long time ago. They were so expensive that I shared them with a friend and they're okay but they're not good for paper and the reason I get lots and lots of value from this pair of scissors and I'll say it again they were a pound a pound shop is there are they're long enough to get quite a good cutting swipe which makes them efficient they're sharp and they've remained sharp they are light which I find really really important when I'm cutting out maybe extra embellishments to go on my faux vintage postcards. So if I want to cut out quite a few of these butterflies I do need something that isn't too heavy and I also want something that's smooth when I'm cutting through the paper. So I mostly use my scissors for cutting out little digital images. So if I was cutting these images out I wouldn't use a trimmer, I would do that all with scissors particularly if there's a corner that needs rounding on some of these and I just sit in an evening and pull out something that I feel like cutting and trim away. I don't use them for fabric much yet but I do want to have a go at fabric and I don't know if these will be the best for fabric I might need to look around for a different pair but they are of course invaluable if you want to either trim around images or fussy cut them. So the other week I made some, let me show you the box, I made some butterflies that I created in a way that they could be better used for embellishment so I added iridescent paint and some glitter glue and some beads so of course I needed to cut a grandly large amount of these out before I got going on that project. I thought these could go on maybe a, a nice tag. So scissors are undoubtedly an absolute necessary item in our toolbox 
but I guess the point I wanted to make is they don't all need to be as expensive as this pair. In terms of our criteria, the cost is very low and I get so much value out of them, I absolutely love them. So they also are part of the family in the top left hand corner of my certainly a beginner's tool set of basic must-haves. Let's talk about corner rounders which are the next items in my top 10 list of tools. So I use this one, it's an X-cut corner rounder with a fairly gentle curve and all you do is put an item in, butt it up really neatly, press down and it cuts through. There's nothing to replace, there's no blade that wears out, it collects all the bits in here so your desk isn't messy. You can get corner rounders that are different shapes and the reason I really like this one is the shape of the curve which just suits me and also how easy it is to cut through sometimes a thicker piece of paper. So I use corner rounders in lots of different ways. So I use them on pages and signatures and I had to look back to find out where I was using it because it's almost become just intuitive to pick it up and use it on some pages. So top of the page here but not on the bottom because that's what I felt like. I would also use it on little images that I might paint so that might go on a page and on this occasion I've trimmed using the corner rounder on three sides. I've rounded the corner on this image that I've created and I can see that I've actually rounded the pages here. So it's even done it on the top of a pocket here. It's just a little detail that I find to be something that suits me. So for me I get a tremendous amount of value out of its use. I know that in this old journal that I did actually write in, if I turn the pages I've got little things to go in pockets where I've rounded the corners, makes me feel that it's aesthetically my own style, more little goodies that have had corners rounded, things to go behind a little tuck spot that I've rounded the corners on whereas this isn't so I've got contrast, you know, bit here and here on the front of my little cactus picture. So lots of different ways that you can use it. On larger projects, so my recent little folder, a really simple folder that I, I put together, you can see that I've rounded the corner on this sloping pocket and I've also, I think it works to round the corners on the outside of the folder itself. So what did these cost? I bought this on eBay as part of a collection so I can't really attribute a specific cost to it but I know that it would, would have been fairly about £3 or so within an eBay batch. And these two are also off eBay, second hand, a similar price. The reason I prefer this one, I get more value out of this and I reach for it more often than these two, which you can probably tell because this one's muckier than these two, is not only the shape of the corner, these are a bit sharper, but it's just something for me that makes the click easy, easier on that one than that one. So when you're doing lots of journaling, creating lots of lovely ephemera, how something feels, well to me anyway, makes a difference as to whether I intuitively reach for it to use it and I don't know whether that, that works for you too. Does that make any sense? Do you become habitually reaching for certain tools and leave others on the side? And so even though some things get purchased, they don't necessarily get the use. And in fact that would be a great chance to explain this little box down here where the cost is low cost of these has been pretty low but I'm not getting the value out of them because I'm not getting the use out of them. So sometimes there's a box in my little graph here which is for those items where I thought it would be a good buy or it might be a quick impulse buy, the cost is low but I don't really get the same value and I'm not going to give myself a hard time for it, such is life but I'm just acknowledging that there are some things which give me a tremendous amount of value and these are the tools that I wanted to share with you today as the basic must-haves. The next tool in my list is a large trimmer and it took me some time to spend £29 on a trimmer and 
this came from Amazon. It felt like a lot of money and I didn't know if I really needed it given the smaller trimmer that I've already talked about. But this qualifies in my top 10. Firstly because it has the measurements on it in centimetres and inches and of course what it is is one with capacity to take 12 inch pieces of paper or cardstock. So I don't need to do measurement of pieces of paper before I put it down on here and trim because I've got the centimetres or inches on it. It also has, really handily, the little marks if you wanted to cut at specific places like A5, A6 or A7. So again, you wouldn't need to measure. It's easy to get pieces of paper underneath. So it's a lift up and a put down as opposed to bring up from the end. I find that really easy to use. It has a metal string which is a great marker for seeing exactly where you're going to cut, particularly if you want to do things accurately. It has a Fiskars blade which is replaceable and easily findable, sourceable on Amazon. And again I'll say I think I bought that set of two for £5. It may have gone up a little bit. These last a really long time. It has an arm that comes out which means you can rest larger pieces of paper on it up here and the measurements continue so you can still carry on measuring exactly where you want to cut and I found that I can get a few pieces of paper underneath it. I've used it lots and lots of times to make the tag or journal bases for lots of different styles of tag. So my recent obsession is using lots and lots of book pages to make substrate like this which is just glued book pages. I've got lots of videos on my channel showing me making these and using them. I paint them or I add extra pretty book pages on top which means that they become possibly four or even five pages depth of paper so quite chunky when they're built up. That's a pretty one isn't it? I love that little dragonfly I think it is. So I cut these down using this and not only does it go through the multiple pieces of paper, the book pages, but I can be quite accurate in where I cut using the measurements and be quite efficient then in getting lots of tags or journaling cards out of the single substrate. The other way in which I've used it recently is to be quite accurate in trimming off the edge of these folders. So I've used a book page and various pretty pretty pages on top to make the folio cover and I needed to trim off a little bit of a book page that was too big behind. So I've been able to use this and be quite accurate putting it underneath and trimming down and you want it obviously to be wonderfully perpendicular to get a nice edge. I also think it's worth noting that these are, because of their accuracy and crispness on the edge, great for trimming down paper that you might use for painting, so watercolour paper that's a bit thicker. And I like to just have a go at playing at making some little images to go in my junk journals too. So I do use it for that. And the other use is, and this is why I'm saying I get so much value from this, I've been making large master boards with strips of paper and I've sewn on them. I might come back and show you those in a bit more detail when I talk about my sewing machine. I've cut these down with my trimmer, with this one, which I obviously needed to use because these are big sheets of paper, but it's gone through again several pages, several sheets, and also it's gone through sewing. So a really, really great investment. Where does it fit on our little graph? Well, it's a higher cost, so it's further up here, but it's tremendous value. So perhaps what I'm going to say is my Fiskars large paper trimmer, even though I waited a long time to get it and perhaps should have got it sooner, I think fits in my box which I call game changers. I can definitely do things with this that I couldn't do with just the smaller trimmer. The cost is a little bit higher, but the value is absolutely amazing and I absolutely love it. The next tool on my list is my sewing machine and 
You may be surprised to learn that when I bought this brand new from Hobbycraft, I paid just over £10 more than I paid for my Fiskars paper trimmer. So that's a little bit of something to think about in terms of val value and cost. I put it on its side here so that I can point out a few of the features because I wanted to share the joy of this real game changer for me with you. And I've waited quite a long time to buy one. I didn't know how to use one. So I genuinely am a complete beginner when it comes to sewing. My encouragement today is to not wait too long if you think this is a route that you want to go. And I know that many of you have sewing machines already anyway. So this sewing machine I can put on its side really easily because it's really lightweight and that works for me because I can then just pick it up and move it. Let me just put it so you can see. I can pick it up and move it around. I can move it off my desk and then I can have all of that space to use still for other things. It's not a fixture on my desk taking up real estate. This sewing machine is unbelievably easy to use. I have a little foot here that I plug in. I'm going to say it's binary and by that I mean when I put my pressure on it it's either stop or go. I don't really feel there's any warm-up act of getting going at a different speed and I think that's probably different from more expensive sewing machines but it has so many reasons for this to be in my top 10 for tools to buy. It has two speeds on the right so you can go off at purely high or purely a low speed. I love it because it's got really easy dials and knobs to use. I can't be doing with too much complexity when it comes to tools and technology. If I want to change stitch, so if I want to change stitch for example to go from running stitch around a tag to zigzag, all I do is stop, make sure the needle is out of the paper tag and then turn the knob and it will go from running stitch to whatever else and then listed here this isn't electronic, I don't fear, fear it's going to fail and I'll pick one of these stitches. I pretty much stick to running stitch and zigzag for most of my projects, although as I said when I came to making these large pouches using a master board I really did make the best of playing at using some of the different stitches. So I played at using a really big zigzag. I used a, I don't even know what they're called, but a, a sort of wavy loopy one up here, a smaller zigzag, and then I went round the pocket with just a small running stitch. So I used it for that, that was great. I've used it on various folders and folios to make the covers more robust and also to give it that finish. And for me it's been unbelievably great value for allowing me to do lots of different things that I otherwise couldn't do and I think those were on our criteria weren't they. We can talk about cost, it hasn't cost me anything else to run it or maintain it, I've had it for a couple of years, I've not had to buy another needle so that's not broken, I bought thread off eBay and it's really easy to fill the little spool underneath here, there is in fact when it's plugged in there's a light under here as well the tension you change so I'm still learning how to use that to get the best result but I don't feel scared to use it and that means I use it more often and that means I personally get more value out of it so I have to say this has definitely been an absolute win I couldn't have done my collaged journal covers like this without it and it was incredibly simple just to sew around them and add some extra texture. So it opened up opportunities and made me feel like my junk journaling was staying fresh and new. So I'm going to say it fits in here undoubtedly my game changer. The cost was higher but I actually think if I had a scale up here I'd put my sewing machine really up here in terms of value. So my lesson and something I thought I'd share is sometimes when something is a higher cost, maybe because the value is so tremendous, it's something we can think about investing in a little earlier. And that's the lesson I would take away from doing this exercise of what's in my top 10. The next tool that I want to mention in my top 10 is a stamp. 
and the one that I would call out as probably top of my list at the moment is this Stampers Anonymous small cling handheld stamp. It's about three inches by four inches. It has gorgeous ledger columns, I'll try to do that without a glare, gorgeous ledger columns and script and really beautiful style of bold font at the bottom here and I use this for adding texture and also special effects to some projects which I'll show you in a minute but in terms of a stamp being in the top 10 it doesn't need to be this one it could be a script stamp so I also have another suggestion here which is an acrylic stamp quite large and I stamp that onto maybe a, a brown or a ginger ink and I add that to my collages in different places to get some texture and some interest like I did on this one and on this one and another suggestion would be anything in the sort of postmark family which I also enjoy adding to my collages so I can see that I've added it here and a few other marks over here. So when I made up my large masterboard using strips of paper I made a lot of use of all of these stamps actually, definitely the, the text and the postmark, great for adding texture and then another way in which I get value out of these, so they sit in my top 10, is stamping on top of, this is when I made some vintage postcards from quite modern paper, stamping on some beautiful images. These are actually Artie Mays images. And then what I did was dust over the top, I don't know if you can see it, with either bronze or gold mica. So you can use your stamps in so many different ways to really make some incredibly special ephemera in whatever style, vintage or not, aren't they pretty? And for this reason I'm definitely going to say that stamps sit in, well they're low cost, high value, I would probably say they're a basic must have. More expensive stamps you might travel into the game changer world but they're definitely for me if they're well chosen and you love them and use them, sitting in the basic must-have box, I just probably suggest that sometimes we can, let's say it, I can have an impulse buy feeling and buy some that I then don't use as much and have them as unused items. And if you do that quite a lot, then perhaps we're starting to sit in this box where we're not getting the value, the cost is low on an individual item basis, but maybe this isn't the best place to be. Maybe we want to really think about what the stamps are we have so we get loads of value out of them and then we can bring them up here to be in our basic must-have box or even our game changer box. The next tool in my list of 10 is an absolute winner. So if I evaluate, evaluate it on the basis of cost, upfront, ongoing, space, impact on the environment, or value, what do I get out of it? It's an absolute beauty and the example I've chosen to share with you today is a water brush, it happens to be our teaser. This one has a fairly chunky set of bristles but it finishes at a rather chiselled point and I love to use this to add colour when I'm making ephemera. So I have a few examples to show you so that I can hopefully bring to life the value that I get from this. So it allows me to make an interesting and textured, I think, background for tags. So I made substrate. I made substrate with book pages and cut it up. But before I cut it, I coloured it with paint. This is an example where I've just used a couple of shades and actually splatted it with paint. You can go to town using any colours you like and anything that you think works with the extra embellishments that you add on top. My Little Bird journaling cards had painted leaves. I'm not skilled at, as an artist and I've said before I'm not really bothered. I just have fun adding some of these little botanical elements behind and then I've cut up the substrate into a, a fairly journal card shape and added a little bit of a, a thread here at the top and a, a cute little bird. And I've added paint on lots of different tags. That's a nice one, isn't it, with blue. 
So as backing it's brilliant for using book pages, gluing them together, adding paint and then with your paintbrush and then decorating them in lots of different ways. I've added paint on my stripped master boards here and I've splatted paint on Amazon packing so there's a little bit of an iridescent paint here and I've also stamped on this one as you can see I've stamped using my stamp and I used this in the window of some little journal cards so I added there we go I added splatted paint using my paintbrush and the stamp to the the, the, the behind part of this window that I'd punched in a little journal card. Again you can see the sewing on these. Cute. There's a bit more behind this one. So there is no limit to what you can do. Obviously you want to have some form of paint but if you have a paintbrush you could even dig out children's paints and have a play. And I think on our criteria the paintbrush that I've buried there is just unbelievably brilliant for allowing us to have fun in our junk journaling and really get a lot of value out of the cost of it. And the tenth item that I want to talk about as being in my top ten list of tools based on cost and value is a cropper dial. So this is a recently acquired We Are Memory Keepers heavy item that allows me to put an eyelet into the tags and I waited quite a while to buy this. It cost me £20 on Amazon. They are available as a combined set of crocodile and eyelets, which would reduce the risk of you buying the wrong size of eyelet. I chose to take a bit of a risk and I bought this for about 20 and a pack of eyelets. There's 500 in here for £5. And they're beautiful colours of rose gold, gold and silver, so everything I want. So. A considered purchase but one that I think has get again has been a bit of a game changer for me a bit like the sewing machine not quite as good as the sewing machine but on that path and I think what it really does is add a professional finish to your projects so I look at this one and I just love the rose gold eyelet that I've been able to add that tones with the dragonfly I added it to my botanical tags and I added it and used it on my bird journal cards and I just contrast that with when I was using just thread and I still like these, I still love these these are more simple but there is something of an addiction forming to putting an eyelet on and squeezing together and getting that joyous finished effect that just brings a project together so I would put this as very high up in value but I accept there is a cost to it so I'm going to say it sits up here in game changer world. I hope this helps you make decisions that really work for you in terms of spending your money on tools that best work for you for making journals and ephemera. If you've enjoyed this then please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Check out my video where I shared my 10 best books for making journals and ephemera and come back next week. I hope to see you soon.